Denise Hess accused the defendant of being responsible for what happened to Dylan, right? Yes. Is that what set him off and caused him to pick up a lock? No. What happened after that comment that set him off to pick up a lock? Um, after he made the comment about her dying um, of cancer, of whatever it was, and that is what drove me to scream out the window at him after I unbuckled my seatbelt and flew across the seat. And that is when, that is when he, when I saw the whites of his eyes, not before. What comment was it in, oh, sorry, what comment was it in relation to that set him off specifically? Eating eater, I believe is the comment that he responded to. Before that, no log? No. And before that, no whites of the eyes? No. But that set him off. Oh, yes. That was the testimony of the mother of Dylan Redwine, the victim in the case that we're covering out of Durango, Colorado. Mark Redwine, the father accused of the murder. Let's take a listen now to some testimony from Dylan's brother. Had you talked to Dylan about his relationship with his father at this juncture? Yes. Had you talked to Dylan about whether he wanted to go see his father? Yes. Had you talked to Dylan about whether he wanted to talk to his father? Yes. What was your understanding of communication based on those conversations with Dylan, the communication between Dylan and the defendant? He did not want to communicate. And was there discussions in your house that you heard with regard to whether he was communicating enough with the defendant? Sorry, can you ask the question again? Yes. Do you ever hear your mother tell him that he should call his father, for example? Yes. And how did Dylan respond to the request to communicate with his father? Um, Dylan always said he can call me, too. So the Thanksgiving trip, I want to talk about this. Um, let, me, let me skip ahead to November of 2012. Um, what was the last communication that you ever received from your brother electronically? Um, it was a happy birthday text that he had sent me. What day is your birthday? November 14th. Do you ever get any other phone calls or emails or text messages or anything from your brother after that? No. But did you have a conversation with him where you saw him in person before he left? Yes. Can you explain to the jury where was that conversation? It was in his bedroom um, at my mother's house. Can you explain that conversation prior to his trip to the jury? Please? Yes, um, we had just gotten back from a concert um, that for my birthday, um, and I dropped my mom off, and I went and talked to my brother while I was at um, my mom's house, and I knew he was getting ready to leave that day, so um, I went and gave him a hug and um, just kind of talked to him about his trip, um, if he was going to see his friends, and um, just kind of seeing how he was feeling about it. How was he feeling about it? Uh, he was pretty anxious. He didn't really want to go. Um, and so I kind of, you know, joked with him a little bit about, um, you know, him leaving. How did you joke with him? Um, you know, I, I knew he wasn't um, very enthused to go, so I just made a comment, you know, don't have too much fun. Um, and he kind of, you know, rolled his eyes at me. Were you teasing him basically about going? Yes. Uh, what about whether his bag was packed or not? Did you note something about that as you had the conversation? Um, I don't recall. Was he prepared to go? Yes. Did you t talk to him about whether he was eager to see his friend? Yes. Was he? Yes. Did you talk to him about whether he wanted to see his father or not? Um, briefly, he kind of just indicated to me that he wasn't, um, that's the part of the trip he wasn't excited for. And then uh, I want to ask you a separate question. In, in having that interaction with him in his room, did you see any injuries on him, any lip sores or any cuts or anything like that before he left? No. Uh, Mr. Redwine, how did you hear that your brother was missing? My mother um, called me while I was at work um, and said that Dylan um, is missing. We can't find him. And that's how she told me. What was your reaction to that? Um, at first, I 
didn't really believe her. Um, it kind of had to sink in for a few minutes. I thought, you know, something, maybe something else is up. Um, but then she seemed pretty adamant about it. So then, um, once she kind of, um, showed her worry, um, then I started to worry as well. As time passed, did you become even more concerned? Yes. Did you try to communicate with him? Yes. Uh, how did you do that? Um, I sent him several text messages um, and called him um, countless times on the, the drive down. Did he ever answer you back? No. And so what did you do that evening? Um, we got into town um, and we spoke with the um, marshal's office. Let me back you up for a second. Uh, you said you were at work. Where were you at work when you heard? I was um, at my office, um, which is in Colorado Springs. Um, I was just getting ready to end the day. Um, so my mom called me about 4 o'clock, um, and I usually leave by 4.30. So she called me. I asked my boss if I could take the next few days off um, due to my brother. Um, so I left work and just packed an overnight bag. My mom was there waiting um, for me. So I got my overnight bag, and we just left straight from my apartment down to Durango.